We come together at a crossroad between war and peace, between disorder and integration, between fear and hope. Around the globe, there are signposts of progress. The shadow of world war that existed at the founding of this institution has been lifted, and the prospect of war between major powers reduced. Hundreds of millions of human beings have been freed from the prison of poverty, with the proportion of those living in extreme poverty cut in half. And the world economy continues to strengthen after the worst financial crisis of our lives. Today, whether you live in downtown Manhattan or in my grandmother's village more than 200 miles from Nairobi, you can hold in your hand more information than the world's greatest libraries. The very existence of this institution is a unique achievement. The people of the world committing to resolve their differences peacefully and to solve their problems together. I often tell young people in the United States that, despite the headlines, this is the best time in human history to be born. For you are more likely than ever before to be literate, to be healthy, to be free to pursue your dreams. And yet there is a pervasive unease in our world, a sense that the very forces that have brought us together have created new dangers and made it difficult for any single nation to insulate itself from global forces. As we gather here, an outbreak of Ebola overwhelms public health systems in West Africa and threatens to move rapidly across borders. Russian aggression in Europe recalls the days when large nations trampled small ones in pursuit of territorial ambition. The brutality of terrorists in Syria and Iraq forces us to look into the heart of darkness. Each of these problems demands urgent attention, but they also are symptoms of a broader problem. The failure of our international system to keep pace with an interconnected world.